And of course, the investigators on the January 6th committee are not only the ones trying to get to the bottom of what transpired on that day. The family of Roseanne Boylan, who died on the steps of the U.S. Capitol, also wants to see those responsible for stoking the big lie and planning the January 6th rally held accountable. Now, as I documented in my recent MSNBC podcast, American Radical, Roseanne Boylan drove up to Washington, D.C. from Georgia to attend Trump's rally on January the 6th. She was one of four people who died at the Capitol that day. But to this day, her family remains unsure as to how Boylan ended up there. Now, Boylan's younger sister, Blair, told me she believes that former President Trump actually played a decisive role in her sister's journey to Washington and ultimately her death. Do you think there is a direct correlation between President Trump and what he was saying about the election fraud and what your sister believed? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think, you know, if he hadn't have said anything, I mean, there wouldn't even been an event up in D.C. on January 6th. So she wouldn't have been there and she wouldn't have died. Now, Boylan's older sister, Lana, and her brother-in-law, Justin, believe that January 6th was, in fact, a terrorist attack. But they also believe that people like Boylan were lured to the Capitol and that those who promoted the rally need to be held accountable for her death as well. I don't want her to go down as some crazed Trump fanatic terrorist person because that's not the person that she was. And when my daughters grow up and learn about this in history class, I don't want them to automatically tie Roseanne with this terrorism event. You know, for me, in regards to January 6th and all of the people that died and injured up there, both Trump supporters and the, the Metro and Capitol Police, we owe it to, to them and to ourselves to find out who really is behind this and how it happened. Because this was, you know, an act of terrorism. Like I said, we don't think that Roseanne was a terrorist. Now, as we approach the first anniversary of their sister's death, over 700 rioters have been charged for their actions on January the 6th, but neither the former president nor any members of his inner circle have yet been held to account for inciting the events of that day. Joining me now is Lana Cave. Her younger sister, Roseanne Boylan, died during the January 6th attack. Lana, thank you so much for sharing your sister's story with me and for making the time to join us tonight. Next week, I know will mark the first anniversary of your sister's death and the Capitol. I know you celebrated Christmas just a few days ago, and it was the first Christmas without her. How are you and the family feeling? Um, well, it was rough, obviously. And Blair and my brother-in-law have the COVID, so it was awkward that way. Um, and then also Roseanne wasn't there, so it's just kind of a, a you know, the crapshoot that is 2021, I suppose. I know we've been talking a lot about accountability, and, and I wanted to hear from you what accountability for Roseanne's death uh, and for the riot look like, not just for you and your family, but for others that you're speaking out on behalf. Do you believe there will eventually be some form of accountability from the highest levels of government all the way down? I mean, I would like to think that there will be, but I mean, I'm not holding my breath. I feel like people with power um, usually find a way of finagling out of things. So I, I don't know. I hope so. You and I have been talking, I was going to say you and I have been talking throughout the course of the year, but, um, but has the January 6th committee reached out to you? Have they been in contact with you or anyone else in your family? Has anyone from any investigative authority been in touch with you to talk about accountability and trying to get answers about that day? No, no, uh, we have not talked to anyone. Um, you know, there's been a lot of misconceptions as to why, um, you know, I spoke out and um, we, yeah, we've not received anything from anyone. Well, tell me a little bit why you have decided to speak out. Why is this important for you to try and get to the bottom of um, of how your sister was lured to the Capitol that day and who's ultimately responsible for it. Yeah, of course. So, you know, um, Roseanne didn't radicalize herself, I think is the main thing that people are not really like, 
um, addressing. There's millions of people in this country that all believe the same thing. Um, and from everyone that I've spoke to on that day, or since then that was there that day, all of them all love their country, um, but they were just, you know, ill-informed as to what was really going on and why they were going there or, um, you know, the disinformation about the big lie, the steal. Um, uh, I think that they were just used as pawns and um, there's the potential for it to happen again. You say they were used, uh, you know, like pawns. And I know the committee has interviewed hundreds of people in its probe so far. And a couple of Trump allies have, in fact, been referred to the Justice Department for uh, contempt of Congress already. And the committee actually does plan to hold, you know, weeks worth of public hearings next year. Talk to me about how you feel about the committee and the work the committee is doing so far. Has it been enough? Are they moving at an appropriate pace? Um, I don't think that, I think they're doing a great job. I just wish that they, um, maybe made it more open to the public uh, transparency. I think that's how a lot of, um, conspiracy theories and stuff evolve because of it being, you know, behind closed doors. And so then there's all this room for people to make up stories as to what's going on. Um, and so I think that they are doing a good job, um, in holding people accountable, but, um, I think, yeah, it just needs to be a little bit more transparent. And, you know, as I mentioned, Alana, we've been working on this podcast for the better part of the year. It has just come out. Um, all the five episodes are available. What has your life been like since the podcast came out and, and, and you know, it's, there, it's received the public reaction that it has received? Have you received any new information about the events leading up to your sister's death? Um, I've not received any new information. Um, I have received a lot of hate mail and texts and people um, criticizing me and saying that I'm defending uh, these terrorists and um, trying to make excuses for my sister when in reality that's not the case. You know, the whole reason why I stepped up to tell Roseanne's story was so that other families don't have to go through this um, like we have, you know, was very traumatic uh, for the country and for our family. And I think that this movement that's going on poses a real threat to our democracy. And we need to really address it at the core, which is who is behind this movement and how do we stop it? Are you at all concerned? Is your family all concerned? And you're talking about this a little bit right now, saying that you don't want something like this to happen to another family. But are you at all concerned the events of January 6th and how close our democracy got to being derailed could happen again if there is no accountability? Yes, yes. Uh, I think that um, it can totally happen again, especially if people don't start thinking that this is like a serious threat, um, because it is. You know, there's millions of people that believe in this movement and they're basically using disinformation and scare tactics to turn uh, grandparents into terrorists. And um, it's happening, the radicalization is happening on a widespread level and at a very alarming rate. Alana Cave, I know uh, this has been a very hard time for you and your family, given the fact that you are celebrating the holidays for the first time without her. So thank you so much uh, for making time for us this evening. Alana Cave, whose sister Roseanne Boylan died at the Capitol on January 6th. Thank you again for joining us and sharing your story. And of course, Thanks. if you are interested in learning more about what led Roseanne Boylan to the Capitol that day, uh, make sure you listen to MSNBC's American Radical, hosted by me. All episodes are now available wherever you get your podcasts.